Coder, come on, feel the noise, because we're going to start playing sounds in our app. We're going to learn about importing libraries, working with sound files, error handling, and the if let statement. Let's get at it. So if we want to play sounds in our app, first we have to get sounds. So over here in Safari, what I've done is I've Googled cheering sounds, and there are a bunch of free sound sites that are available online, and here's just one of them. Now you always want to make sure that you have the right to use any sounds in your app, otherwise they'll be rejected from the App Store and you will be in violation of copyright. That said, for educational purpose here, you can use pretty much any sound you'd like. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to select cheering sound, but you can listen to it first. Yay! Isn't that inspiring? I'm going to use this. This particular site can be kind of tricky. Sometimes when you visit it, there are ads that have buttons in them that make it look like that's where you want to click to download. What you want to focus in on, at least on this site, are the two little icons that say WAV or MP3. You can use either of those. I'm going to use MP3. I'm going to save this file to the desktop, but on the desktop, I'm going to click on New Folder so that I create a new folder called Sounds. That's where I'll organize all of our sounds. And inside this new folder, I'm going to name this first sound Sound Zero. And I'll click Save to download the MP3. And now I want you to repeat this procedure. So find new sounds, download them, name subsequent ones numerically. So sound one, sound two, sound three. And I'll advance now to show you what I've done. I've got a folder named sounds and I've got files sound zero all the way through sound five. They're all MP3 files, all of them are different. Now what I'm gonna do is drag this whole folder into my project. So let's open the project up in Xcode, click on XCProj, and in the project navigator, click the assets catalog. And here we see the images that we had before. And you know what? We've got all of these images in here. We can tidy things up by putting all of these images in their own separate folder. So why don't we do that now? We could just right click somewhere in where the files are listed in the assets catalog, scroll down on the menu that shows up, select new folder, and why don't we call this folder images? As soon as the folder is created, if you press backspace, that should allow you to change the name of the folder. So we'll rename it images. Then we can highlight all of these images, image zero through image nine, and drag them into the folder. We don't have to change our code at all. We don't have to make sure that we acknowledge the new path with the files in a folder. It's all just gonna work. That's the marvel of the assets catalog. Thanks again, Xcode. Now let's get the sounds in our project. I'm gonna return to the finder, go back to the desktop and find my sounds folder, click it and drag it and drop it right into the assets catalog. All of my sounds are now in my project. So now how do we work with these sounds in our app? Well, there are a few steps and we'll work in viewcontroller.swift because we need to update our code. So first, since most apps don't work with sounds, Swift doesn't have sound features built in from the start. If it included all the sound stuff and it's not going to be used, it would just lead to app bloat, it would take up more space, and your files would be bigger than they need to be. But it's super easy to put in the commands and data structures we need to work with sounds. All we'll do is we'll import an additional library. Right under where it says import UI kit, which is all the stuff we need for the standard iOS interface, we'll say import AV foundation. AV stands for audiovisual. Now that we've done this, we can create the software objects and use the commands to play sound. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create what's called an audio player. An audio player is just a software object that handles playing files. Think about that as the audio equivalent of a button or a label. Now in the way that we create a variable for a new button or label, we're just going to say var, we'll call our audio player, audio player, lower camel case, colon, we're going to declare it, but we're not going to initialize it, AV audio player. That's the class, which is the blueprint for creating a new audio player object, and then finish this with an exclamation point to force unwrap it. And here's an important aside. If you hadn't first included this statement, import AV foundation, those data structures wouldn't be imported into your code, then AV audio player wouldn't show up in code completion. And I'll delete this import statement just to show you. If you typed AV audio player, you'd get an unresolved identifier error, meaning that your code doesn't know that this thing exists. So if you ever see that, check your imports. And I'll quickly undo because I do want to import AV Foundation. So with our audio player set up, let's go down to message button pressed. This is where we're showing a random message and where we're showing a random image. Let's go ahead and just play one sound for starters. Now when we play sound, we've got a few steps that we need to follow. And it's going to look a little gnarly at first. I'll describe what's happening and what's going to be nice is the code we'll finally end up with in another video will be reusable. So anytime you want to generically play a sound, you'll be able to copy this code and paste it in a new app. So what we've got to do now is essentially a two-step process. Number one, we've got to read our sound file and load it up as data. We'll check to see that we've got the data okay. If not, we'll handle the error. But if it does work, then we're at step two. We're going to initialize that blank audio player that we created. We're going to take the data and format it as a sound that can play. And if all of this works, we'll play the file. If it doesn't work, we'll handle the error. Let's do it. So in this video, just to demonstrate how to play sound, all I want to do is play sound zero. We'll learn to play random sounds in the next video. So remember our step one, it's to read the data in from the file in our asset catalog. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to type in if let sound, which is going to be the constant that holds our data, 
equals NS data asset. Now don't let the name intimidate you. We're essentially saying, hey, create data. Now inside the parentheses, we're going to give it the name of a file in our assets catalog. So we're saying create data from this file and slap it into a constant that we're calling sound. Now notice that it says NS data asset is returned. That's the type of object, but it's got a question mark here. It means it could be nil. So if we pass it a file name that doesn't exist, or if there's a problem reading in the data, it's not going to be able to create the data asset. So that's why we need to handle an error. Let's press enter here and first give the name of the file, sound zero. Now you'll notice this says if let, but we've seen let before, that creates a constant. What if let does is it says if we get a value that is not nil, then you create a constant called sound, the let sound part, and you can use it in the first set of curlies. But if we get a nil, then we drop down to the else condition and we do whatever's in between those curlies. In this case, we'll just print an error message to the console. So I'll just put in a message that says print, capital error, could not read data from file sound zero. And one of the things I like to do is put emojis in front of my error statement so that I can see them really easily in the console. So I'll press control command space. That brings up emojis and symbols. I'll type in angry and choose the angry face. And hopefully I will never see you because I want my app to be error free. So now what do we do if we did read the file incorrectly? Well, we go up here to the positive condition and we're gonna write a chunk of code. I'm not gonna write it in order because that might help me explain it a little bit better. And so now that we've got this data asset, we're gonna use it to initialize our audio player with the sound. So we'll start saying audio player, but I'm gonna modify this statement. You'll see why in just a bit. Equals AV audio player. And this is a blueprint. You see how it's upper camel case? This is a class. This C in the upper left means class. And then I'll do an open parenthesis to see how I can create an object using this class blueprint. And I got a lot of different choices in here, but the one I'm gonna choose is this one that says data because we got our sound file and an NS data asset. Now notice that it says throws. Certain functions in Swift that have the possibility of an error occurring in them can be set up so that they do what's called throwing an error. They pass out information about the error that occurred. This AV audio player creation function will tell me if there was an error. And if there was an error, then this will be one of those special errors that gets thrown. Now, functions that throw an error are a good thing because they tell you, hey, something went wrong, so you can deal with it rather than your program crashing. But there is some extra code we need to write whenever we use a function that can throw an error. I'll show you how in just a bit. So I'm gonna press return to accept this option to create an AV audio player with the data input. And then for the data parameter in here, I'm gonna type in sound because that was the NS data asset that we created. But we actually have to go inside of this to get to the data part. So we just put in a dot data. And I know there's a lot that's going on here that you've never seen before, but again, we're gonna be able to write this as a chunk of code that's gonna be reusable. So try not to be too intimidated. We're gonna get some cool sound playing in just a bit. And I'll press return and the data that we pass in is sound.data. Now here comes that special code we have to write when there's the possibility that we might throw an error. So we're gonna put in this structure that says do curly braces, catch curly braces. Inside of the do is where we're gonna put in the audio player equals audio player data that we just wrote. And I'm gonna highlight this line and cut it, but I don't quite have it right yet. Right in the first set of curly braces here under do, I'm gonna type in first try, T-R-Y space, and then paste this in. So this first set of code that works together is do try catch. Do is the first part, and that's where we go ahead and we try to do something that has the possibility of throwing an error. If it doesn't throw an error, then we finish the code in the first set of curlies after the do. And if there's no error, we skip over the catch and the curlies after the catch. Now, if this try statement does throw an error, we immediately stop executing any more code inside of the do curlies, jump down into the curlies under catch, and that's where we handle the error. And in this case, if we get an error, we'll just print a message to the console. So under try, we only have one more line to write, and that's the line that we perform if we've successfully set up our player, and that's just audio player dot play, open and close parentheses. And you see the description for this play method, it's just plays a sound asynchronously. That means it'll play the sound in the background while our code continues to execute. Now if that try statement throws an error, then we're gonna go to the catch area and print a message to the console. And I'll say print, and why don't I grab the error that I printed below, just paste the contents up here, and I'll change it to 
How about error could not initialize AV audio player object. And I'm going to put a string interpolation right in front of the could with slash open and close parentheses. Inside the string interpolation, I'm going to type in the word error all in lowercase. Now this is a structure that comes out if an error is ever thrown. And after error, we can say dot localize description, and that will print out a description of the error right to the console. It's useful for you. If you ever do get an error while you're developing, you'll get some more detail on what happened. This is all the code we wrote. There's a lot of new stuff in here. There's a lot of stuff that looks really unfamiliar, but again, we're going to tweak it a little bit in a subsequent video, and we're going to have a chunk of code that we can just copy and paste and repeat every time we want to play a sound. But for now, let's go ahead and build and run, and let's see if we get that cheering. And here we go. Listen up. Prepare to click. Well, isn't that spectacular? I'm cheering you on too, Swifter. Congratulations, you got sound playing. We're going to do a little bit more in some subsequent videos, but your app is nearly done. Keep at it, Coder.